The key to understanding part A, in which we have to determine what an observer on a moving spacecraft would measure as another astronaut's heart rate, is to understand that the observer, as well as the astronaut, whose heart rate is being measured, are at rest with respect to a hypothetical clock on board the spacecraft. This can be a little confusing because the spacecraft itself is definitely moving. However, the clock and the observer and the clock and the astronaut are at rest relative to one another. One way to understand that is to ask yourself, is the distance between the observer and the clock or the distance between the astronaut and the clock changing? Is that distance between them changing? The answer is no. The clock is just sitting there on the spacecraft, the observer is sitting there on the spacecraft, and the astronaut is sitting there on the spacecraft. They're not moving relative to each other. And therefore, because they're not moving relative to each other, if the astronaut's heart rate is 70 beats per minute, then the observer on board the spacecraft will also measure that same heart rate. It'll be 70 beats per minute. So there's really no calculation necessary for part A. It's more of a conceptual understanding based again on the fact that the observer is not moving relative to the clock that is being used to measure the astronaut's heart rate. And therefore the heart rate measurement won't change. It's 70 beats per minute. But in part B, we have to imagine a hypothetical observer over here on Earth. And this observer over here on Earth is observing the astronaut and the other astronaut who's accompanying her whizzing by. And yes, their heart rate is 70 beats per minute as measured on board the craft, but what would an observer back here on Earth measure? So what we're going to have to do is calculate a new time interval. This time interval is known as delta t. This is a time interval measured by the observer on Earth who is moving with respect to the clock. Again, this can be confusing because the person back on Earth isn't moving in a sense, but ask yourself, is the distance between the observer on the Earth and that clock on the spacecraft increasing as the spacecraft travels by? And the answer is certainly yes. As the spacecraft moves farther and farther to the right in this picture, the clock is getting farther and farther away from the observer back on Earth, and therefore the observer on Earth is moving relative to that clock. So we have to calculate that new time interval as noted, and we're going to do so, whoopsies, by using the time dilation equation right here. So what we're gonna do is just remember that in one minute, there were those 70 beats of the astronaut's heart. So in essence, we have a time interval of one minute as measured by the astronaut on the spacecraft. So that was the proper time, as it is called. It is the time measured by the observer and the astronaut who were at rest relative to the clock on board the spacecraft. But we're gonna calculate delta t. This is the time interval as measured by an earthbound observer. And so delta t sub p, we take one minute and plug that in for that proper time, and we divide it by the square root of one minus the speed of the craft squared, the speed of the craft squared. Now that speed was given to us, and the value was 0.9 times the speed of light. In essence, it's 90% of the speed of light. So what you do is you go like this, you go 0 0.90 times C, and then you square that entire quantity as dictated by the equation, and then you divide that by the speed of light squared. Now there's a nice calculational simplification that we can do here. So the numerator will remain that one minute time interval, and then in the denominator, what you're going to wanna do is square 0.9, and when you square 0.9, you're gonna get 0.81. But you also have to square the c that's inside those parentheses, so you'll get c squared. But this is also divided by c squared, as indicated in the equation. Those c squareds will cancel out. So what you can do now is pick up your calculator and just do 1 divided by the square root of 1 minus 0.81. When you do that, you're going to get a different time interval. Turns out to be about 2.29 minutes. So the time interval measured by someone moving with respect to the clock is longer. It's 2.29 minutes. Now we can calculate the heart rate as measured by that earthbound observer. The heart rate is simply the 70 beats 
of the astronaut's heart divided by this new time interval as measured by that Earth-based observer. And when you divide these two numbers, you're going to get a heart rate of about 31 beats per minute. So we'll abbreviate that BPM. And this would be the correct answer to the question.